All right, so the trading week that was this week. So I'm just going to show you a couple of trades that I took on Monday on the 12th of August. A couple of trades I took on the 14th of August. So it was a Wednesday and some beautiful moves that occurred on Friday. Overall, gold has been bullish, as you guys have known for a long time. And if you've actually been watching the videos that I've made, I've been showing this pair has been going to the long side for months now. And obviously, if you look at it on bigger time frames, it's been doing that for years. But specifically for the time frames that I trade, which are obviously lower time frames, it has been showing exceptional bullishness. And as you can see right in front of you, these are, as you know, the clouds of liquidity sketches that I always talk about and I draw a lot. If it's on Instagram as well. As you can see, this is from TradingView. These are these areas where I drew where people are likely looking to get short if prices had to return to those areas because that's where liquidity is, i.e. liquidity as in orders in the market. So all these orders right here, in fact, obviously not all of them because it's only 16%, but imagine that people really think the same way, right? In fact, they do. People think the same way. So most people are going to be looking to get short if prices had to return to areas People are martingaling, they're averaging out. People are already in shorts and they are looking to take profit on those shorts or they are adjusting their stop losses so they can continue being in those shorts. And that is creating liquidity. And that's why 62% of retail traders or 62% of people on myfxbook.com believe that this instrument is going short, even though it's showing bullishness for the longest time. It's been showing bullishness since about the 20th of February this year. And this is what you could see on the right side on this institutional sentiment where on average it's just showing bullishness, it's just showing green on the intraday and the daily sentiment, which means that on the intraday, this was specifically on Monday and this is on a longer time frame. So this is more on a weekly to monthly basis. So this actually identifies real trends and true trends within a market and this is just specifically on gold you can do this on any market so that is where the liquidity is resting so the anticipation is for prices to go even higher than these points over year so prices are likely gonna go higher than these than these points over year and that was what supported that bullish bias that i had on gold and i've been having this bias for months now just getting long 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 on it and just taking it to the upside and yes you can short but just keep in mind that most people they short with infinite amount of leverage so they just go short on something hoping that it would go short forever and it's not proven to do that for the last few months even a few years even even a decade gold has gradually increased in value for the longest time so the chances of it going lower or going to lower prices is very unlikely. And even if it had to do that, prices on a bigger time frame would still reaccumulate itself for the next few years if that had to happen and take prices even higher than the points that it created when it went down, if it had to go down. So let me just show you the trades that I had taken on Monday. So this is Monday's trades. Uh, so as you can see, I entered on a one minute time frame. And this is the five minute time frame. So this is the time frame where I would validate any sort of demand or any sort of supply that's coming in. And as you can see, it's just clear bullishness. Like you can see from these red and yellow and blue lines, these are moving averages. So what this is basically saying is on average, price on this time frame is doing this, as you can see, you know, and you don't even need a moving average lines. You can even just see it with your naked eye that this price is going up and up and up and up on this time frame. And the same thing on the 30 minute time frame, right? Yeah, you can see that this is just one bit of the 30 minute time frame and that that's this whole bit on the one minute time frame. So all time frames that I use are pointing to the upside. So that's exactly why I got involved. However, I think this trade that I took was a break even where prices went in my direction. However, when I had taken, when I took the stop loss, and put it above the order or above this position, it actually came back and took me out at break even. So I actually did not make any profit on that or I didn't make any loss on that. It was just break even. And the reason why I think it went in a break even direction is because 
these moving average lines are very far extended from each other. So this is probably an indication where I probably shouldn't have entered this trade because what this is saying is on average, prices are most likely going to fiddle in this area and then come back. And then when they come back, you're going to see the moving averages sort of like curve the 10 minutes or the 10 period moving average sort of do this because this is the 10 uh, period and this is the 20 or this is the 50 I think and this is the 200 so this meshes candles over 10 10 candles and this was once 50 candles and this one's over 200 so on average the moving average lines are probably going to do something like this and this is why I think this was a bad trade and I think that's why it stopped me out or it actually took me on a break even sorry not stopped me out but yeah, that's that's not really the best trade, but it was still going with the momentum of the trend. And as you could see, that's exactly what happened. It did take me out at break even over here. You can see. And just like I said before, prices pulled back to a point of equilibrium or point where it had to average out. And you can see that the moving average lines, they are starting to equal or they're starting to curve in where they're not expanding and they're not moving away from each other they're starting to come closer they're coming closer and that is actually when you get the best opportunities and that's exactly why i took another buy trade again however it's still within this 30 minutes expansion because even the 30 minutes these moving averages are very far from each other so it's still most likely gonna move around chop around this area because this is a bigger time frame so it's going to do it like this on a bigger time frame and this whole thing would look something like this on a lower time frame right it would look like this it would be a a short down trend or a short pullback on a lower time frame so it still took me out of break even this trade i think yeah it did i think from this move right here if i'm not mistaken so even though it was going in my direction it still took me out so there were two trades that i had taken which were buys and they were both break even trades so no profit on it no losses on that they were just break evens right and i still took another trade because the criteria was still there for me to take a trade and every single time i speak about this you know the impulse a bit of a correction and it impulses out of the correction and then you look to enter a trade but i did it actually quite earlier on this one otherwise the position would be much higher than what it's shown in the slide so i actually took a buy on this leg i th i believe around here that's why the buy order is right here so i bought this price point over here and the price was fiddling around the 10 moving average line and it was coming down buying it back up coming down buying it back up and it started to create a tight range over here where prices would still hold this blue line so it will be above the blue line and it's creating sort of a, a tight range over here and the price broke out of that range because on average what is it doing it's showing that it still wants to go higher it still wants to go higher so that's exactly what I did. I just followed the momentum. Prices were speaking and I just took what was taken in front of me, which was to follow the trend. That's exactly what I did. So put this one on break even. I think I took um, a one is to two on this one. So I think I partialed out at about one is to two, if not mistaken, maybe it probably one is to one. But uh, I did partial out on this one. It didn't come back and hit me out of break even. I did take some profits on this one. And as you can see, it still was expanding on bigger time frames. So it didn't really come back and take me out on this trade. So there were two trades, break even, and then this one was a one is to two. So plus two on this one. So yeah, it's, it's, it's quite simple, guys. You could clearly see in front of you, like on Monday, it was just pure bullishness, honestly. And that's all you had to do was just follow the trend, follow the momentum, prices are speaking. Even the movie, the moving average lines are showing you that prices are increasing, increasing over a period of time. 
meaning on average it's most likely to increase and if there's a breakdown we'll probably step back and witness the breakdown because if there's a breakdown that had to occur it's most likely going to be choppy sideways action where you don't want to get involved in all right so let me actually just go out of this because during that day where i was trending or i was trading sorry you're trending during that day where i was trading i actually went on youtube and i saw the account where i learned how to trade it was very interesting because they were actually doing the exact same thing that i was doing on monday and it's just very satisfying to see the people that you learned from they all think the same way you know these people they they come from different parts of the world and it's very nice to see people are thinking the same way that you are and we're also following gold on lower time frames and they were also following gold to the top side so just watch this part right Hello, how's it going? And welcome back to Mental. I'm not going to show the whole so, video. On this beautiful day, we've had. And that beautiful day was a Monday. You can see the top of We had just... a few members. I'm just going to go over this very quickly so I can then show you it live and then walk you through an actual system you can use. But 10 hour a day on gold for this guy on a one minute chart. You see, um, everyone's you're buying. here looking for an entry on gold. Good for him. Let me just go up a little bit here. And I, and I only so saw this video oil, after I traded. And it's, it's so satisfying. It's so satisfying just to see like people are also thinking the same way and like look look at this like it's the same thing that he's doing look he, they, they, there's an impulse there's a correction there's an impulse over here and this guy whoever this person is is seeing something on the five minute chart on gold which I was also trading that day a buy opportunity he took it right here and it started to expand and it started to go in his direction but it's it's very satisfying just to see that really it, i know i've said it so many times right now but like it's satisfying just to see people doing the exact same thing that you're doing and we all think the same way we all see the same models the same movement of trend the same movement of price action within a certain instrument and like i said this could be in any instrument it doesn't have to only be gold but gold is just one of the instruments that have been moving and have been trending for the past few months now so yeah sent out but this is one of the ones we're going to be breaking down today just going through through this we have here we got gengar a funded member on the gold train as well i mean in this case is because gold is the only thing delivering very well right now yeah another one on, gold on the one minute um this guy's on jp cad another gold trade <laughs> on the 15 second right so again a lot <laughs> even of on the 15 frames, second course, guys when wow. you're when you're in any community when you're being taught anywhere whatever it might be the people that you're oftentimes going to see a lot of trades from are of course going to be the ones on lower time frames because yeah. lower time frames tend to have more setups right exactly. we've spoken about this as a let me actually do this we've spoken about this in the last few videos where we worked through the advantages or disadvantages of dealing with trading a much lower or a higher time frame and a lot of them involved as you guys remember the fact that as you go lower of course you open yourself up to potentially more opportunity uh for more money to be made quicker yeah. and all that stuff that comes along with that right so again we, we kind of went over that and we went into a deeper uh set within the within the portal in the in the mentorship however you got a you got a good whiff of that yeah and again just back to back you know many people trading the gold looking many at people so today, trading gold guys I give on you that a day kind of step-by-step -step plan that you can same yourself thing to also trade this play on gold to start looking for these same kind of trades and going forward to look at a number of assets so you can actually start catching these actual trends so here we have gold what i'm going to do is i'm just going to move us back to the beginning so of yeah the you guys can go watch that whole video it's called mintfx.com it's on youtube here's a channel right here if I can just show you the channel. So this is actually the whole channel that I learned how to trade. So it's influenced my way of looking at markets and you should really go check it out, guys. It's, it's, it's amazing. So anyway, back to this, right? So let's get back to the PowerPoint. So play from current slide. So yeah, so this was actually a few screenshots that I'd taken on Telegram from a signal group that was posting a roadmap, as you could see, for sell opportunity. So what this guy is saying over here is that based on the chart above, I will look for a sell opportunity when the price reaches the zone, which is exactly what I say all the time, guys. Like, this is just one signal provider, right? But again, most people think the same way. So if this guy is doing this, I'm telling you now, hundreds of millions 
possibly even billions of people are going to do this exact same thing where when a price and I, I know why he's doing that because look look at what the price did in this areas over here it, it rapidly dropped and when prices came back to a certain area over here it rapidly dropped again so this interest over here this this interest over here this is what causes the sentiment this is what causes the belief for retail traders to short in areas like this if price had to go back to those areas and again and again and again i keep on saying this all the time and i hope you guys are tired of me saying this if you actually are listening to me this is what creates liquidity in a market this is what actually makes trends continue on their trajectory on whatever they're doing this is what makes gold continually continuously go long and long and long and long and long this is what makes assets continue to trend and lo and behold i think i took this a few days later so i think this was good morning to everyone yeah i think this was maybe on tuesday or wednesday i'm not sure i think maybe maybe it was on but it was it was it was the next day right as you can see the price went to that area and you could see that he had some issues with telegram and was unable to send any messages really really how how coincidental is the one time that it did not reach his zone he has an issue with his telegram imagine if this actually went in his direction he would have been kissing his own ass talking about how he's brilliant and all that stuff but now it doesn't go in his direction now his telegram's not working wow really mate you think we, you think when we think we're stupid come on like just just own up to the fact that you were just wrong like it's okay like don't be disingenuous like you have you have what you have fourteen thousand people on your signals group and you're gonna tell them that your 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 telegram was not working come on mate we, we, we weren't born yesterday but that's what these guys do like every time the signal doesn't go in their direction. It's always their telegram wasn't working. Oh, your telegram was working really fine every time you were winning signals and you were posting profits every single time. The one time where you make a mistake or where your analysis wasn't great, now all of a sudden your telegram was not working. Come on. <laughs> I'm only seeing this now, guys. So like, I, I actually didn't read the message. I actually just took the screenshot because I just know how these people think. I just know how most people think. They... They, they think like this. And this is what creates liquidity in the market. So this is the first time I'm reading this message right now. That's why I'm reacting the way I'm reacting right now. It's it's absolutely disingenuous. I hate these signal people. Like, they're just, they're, just, they're, just, they're the biggest pieces of shit in the world. They are treacherous people. Like, anyway, sorry. I, I, I don't want to use bad language. But anyway, it, it just it pisses me off. It honestly annoys me. Like, they just, they, they say one thing. And when it doesn't go in their direction, now they, they, they make up all sorts of excuses and stuff. It's like, at least say, guys, I thought this was going to be a sell, but I was wrong. Fine. Don't lie and say that your telegram was unable to send messages. Chief, we all know you're lying. <laughs> you're lying. Come on. Let's move on, guys. So, right. So, on wednesday so these screenshots were on wednesday and i took these because again this is what people do right so they gave they said we must sell on gold in a certain area right so this is a different signal group and this guy is selling 6971 so he's selling around 2469 to 2471 so he's selling in that zone he's looking for sell opportunities within that price zone and it's quite similar to this guy even though he's doing it at a higher price, he's at 74 and this one's at 69.71. So it's a similar type of, of thought, right? It's a similar school of thought where they seen the support and resistance. They seeing the, the choppy flippy, whatever these people see. Like, I just know what they see, but I, I can't seem to give it a name, right? Because what they are seeing is that a low has been created or a high, sorry, has been created over here. It broke down, so if price had to return here, we look to get short. And that's exactly what they see. So I actually took a buy, as you can see in front of you, a buy. Because what this is, this is 
showing bullishness still because look the moving averages are still pointing up so what does this mean on average on average prices are likely to what increase that's what it's likely to do on average what it does it's a different thing right but what it wants to do is increase on average so the criteria was met again where there was an impulse there was a correction i t i placed the trade and the anticipation was for price to expand which is exactly what it did as you can see over here it expanded from here and it expanded even further as you can see over here so from about 70 to 71 all the way to 77 and this is exactly in those areas where they were looking to get short they were looking to get short where the guy the one guy was what 69 to like 71 so it's round about here and then the other guy was about 70 to 74 right so in this area they were they were all looking to sell right they were all looking to sell in this area but guys look at where the price is you can see the time right 10 23 10 31 and 10 44 look at where the price is after that it's at 77 and look at where his stop loss was the stop loss was at 76 the stop loss was at 72 so this is exactly what i'm talking about guys and look you can be wrong you know but the the point that i'm trying to say to you is guys this is what creates liquidity this is this is nothing more than a lower time frame reaccumulation this is prices accumulating 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 and then there's a breakdown you can see there's a breakdown over here this is nothing more than reaccumulation to potentially take prices even higher than the so which is exactly what happened here that's what a reaccumulation is so that is something that you need to assume when this happens if you're in a bullish market and vice versa if you're in a bearish market you have to assume redistribution if you're in a bearish market right so they most people don't understand that most people still do not understand that prices do not just break down to then continue going short they break down so they can reaccumulate itself to potentially take itself even higher and that's why big banks you know people who lose a lot of money their wife divorces them crazy stories like that's why banks and all these millionaires and all these stuff they go broke overnight it's because they don't understand that once a trend has established itself once something wants to continue doing something or once it's likely or it's proven to you prices are speaking to you it's continuously and look guys this is what this is wednesday let's go back to monday monday it was still in and around this area monday it was it was around 2450 and then on wednesday it's where it's on 2470 so it it never went back to 2450 and even from monday those screenshots that i've shown you people were still looking to get short and prices did not return to the 2000 440 level where it opened on the monday and it was at 2470 on the wednesday and they were still looking to sell and this price just kept going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher it just kept it just keeps going higher it just keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and and for some reason when prices right when prices tend to do this right they so let me draw it again right so when they goes higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher in these areas they people look to get short 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 and this is what creates clouds of liquidity this is what creates real liquidity where over time prices would do this and just boom it would explode and just liquidate all those people people would lose money people would throw all their life savings at that one trade thinking it's gonna go short when it's proven over a period of time that it's not done that it's the prices have not decreased at all it's just increasing 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 and you could see that's exactly what happened now this trade was on friday right where i actually again it's the same thing like really this is actually another reaccumulation 
reaccumulations happen all the time. They they happen. This is on a one minute time frame. Reaccumulations happen on bigger time frames. They happen on all time frames. It's fra- it's fractality. So again, prices accumulated, and then it broke down. But this breakdown is nothing more than reaccumulation. It's just gonna take itself even higher, and that's exactly what happened. And I bought because there was an impulse and a bit of a correction, and I took the trade, as you can see, by in the anticipation, right, for prices to expand and go higher. And I believe that's exactly what that trade did, is because I actually took that trade in around this area over here, and I think I protected this low. And look, guys, pay attention to this. It never returned to this low over here. Look at look at the price over here. For one minute, this is where the price was. I'm actually going to draw a line so then you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. Even though some of you guys can't see it already. But look at this low over here. Now, let's draw a line, right? So it's around this area, 2,458. Now, the price is left at around half past 10 in the morning at that time. It left that area. It left that area. This is where the price was. Boom, boom, boom. Chop. Now, I want you to pay attention to something. In this period of time, right, has the price, did the price ever go back to 2,458? No, it never. It went there at 10 o'clock in the morning, and it has never been back there ever since. So this is what I'm talking about. This is this is a sign of bullishness where lows are continuously being made. There's a low that has been made. There's a low that has been made. There's a low that has been made. There's a low right here. And none, all four of these instances where lows are made, prices have never returned to those areas. And that is a sign of bullishness. This happens on all time frames guys and this is exactly what i mean by clouds of liquidity and this is exactly what i mean by establishing context and this is exactly what i mean when the context is met you're most likely going to take better trades when you're following that trend than you are going against it because if you take trades that are going against it you're going to become the liquidity that's going to be liquidated over time i.e you're going to lose a lot of money so this happens all the time every single time so this is just the same thing that you're seeing on different time frames. So this move over here, I believe this is the same thing. This this whole thing over here. Just that one bit on a 30 minute time frame. And this on the four minute time frame is also the same thing over here. So again, fractality. But I'm just showing you that all time frames that I use are pointing long. None of them are pointing or none of them have any evidence of going short or selling. They all buy, buy, buy. So you look for opportunities to buy. And again, you could have taken any single opportunity in these areas. There is a bit of an impulse, a correction, an impulse. You probably take this buy and you probably get stopped out because the price went down in this area. Then prices reaccumulate itself and take itself even higher and prove itself that they want to go higher. You probably take a trade over there. It probably goes a bit. You hit break even. You sit back and you wait because now prices break down again. Prices reaccumulate again. You take the entry. It goes. It comes back a little bit and it goes and it, gi it gives you a partial. So you probably would have taken a loss over here. You would have taken a break even over there. And you probably would have taken maybe a 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 3 partial over there. Because... Understand that even though you're with the trend, you can still lose trend, lose trades, or you can still get stopped out of break even. Just understand that you're not always going to be correct all the time, but it's just very powerful to understand that it's it's a likelihood, it's a it's a percentage game, it's a probabilities game where if you're buying in this market, you're most likely going to put yourself at a better situation in terms of your account you're most likely going to have better results with your trades than if you had if you had to sell because if you had to sell you're probably taking 
losses all the way. A lot of minus ones, minus one, minus ones, minus ones, minus ones, and that will affect your account long term because you are not listening to the chart. You are not listening to price. Price is speaking to you. It's continuously telling you, hey, I want to go long. I want to go higher. Why are you selling me? Like, stop selling me. And even if you do sell, just know it's going to be medium to high risk trade. But if you're buying me when I'm telling you that I'm going long, your trades are most likely going to be low to medium risk. So, yeah, on to the next part, right? And again, there's, these are a few trades I took um, after half past two. I think there was red news at that time, but it didn't really do anything. So, again, I, I took the second trade on that day. And this was a beautiful one is to three, I think. Or maybe even more than that, actually. I think it was probably plus six on that one. It, 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 it's this trade over here, right? You can see this exact trade I took over here. And those are those exact trades I took in the morning. Those, these, this trade over here. Because I actually put two positions. That's why it's showing two arrows over here. So I bought over here. I bought in these price areas. And look, prices never went lower than where I bought. Prices didn't go lower. It went higher because, again, it's the understanding of what price wants to do. It's the understanding of trend is speaking to me. And it's up to me to listen to it and go with it. So you could see, like, look at this entry over here. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. This, this is exactly what I talk about all the time, guys. So... It impulses, it impulses, it impulses. It's buying this moving average lines. And then it breaks down. It's on some time level, you just assume that it's just reaccumulating itself to take itself even higher. And that's exactly what it did. It broke down, reaccumulating again. And the second expansion was even more powerful for more powerful than this one. And that's exactly where I took the buy opportunity because it moved away, it corrected a bit as you can see by the single red candle, and it expanded out again. And that's where I took the buy. And I took the buy in the anticipation for prices to likely expand. And that's exactly what happened. And it never returned to the area where I put the stop loss before, before I moved it to break even. It never returned. It's, it's simple, guys. It's, 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 it's just the understanding of the impulse, a bit of a correction, there's an impulse, you take the trade if it's a buy opportunity. And when you take the trade, it's all about management. You manage that position that you had bought on that price point, on that market, whether if it can go back here and take you out at stop loss, or it could go and then take you out at break even, or it could just go and give you a beautiful partial or give you a beautiful uh, re reward like what it did on that day. But you will only get trades like that if you just understand that the price is most likely going to do this, then it going short. You're only going to get trades like that if you just understand that fundamentally money wants to go higher and higher and higher and higher. How am I going to get involved so I can be with that money? And even though I bought at around 77 and it went to 87, as you can see on the right of here, a few minutes later, I... It, it did. Can you see? This is the exact same thing. This whole thing right here. This is the exact same thing that you're seeing right here. Can you see how similar this is? Like, I, I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you actually see how similar these two photos look? This was at half past 10 in the morning. But the fractality, the understanding of what you're looking for and if what you're looking for is occurring and you understand that, okay, this is what this thing looks like and you know what you're looking for because it's within a trending market, its prices are moving that day, I am going to execute the trade. Can you see how similar this looks to that one there? So I took the buy opportunity again because it, it's showing the same thing and I bought at 91 or the 90 level and again, prices... Either it wants to take me out at a loss or it can go and take me out at break even or it can go and give me a reward. And in this case, again, it went and it gave me a reward. I think I partialed out at plus three, I think. So it was already plus five on that day or plus six on that day 
and then it gave me plus four or plus I've, I've lost track of how many plus threes and plus twos and whatever I got but the point is the reason why this entry criteria is so powerful and I probably should have said this right is that the idea of this entry criteria where prices are increasing 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 and then there's like a bit of a correction in the understanding that this correction is just reaccumulating itself to go even higher than this point the reason why this entry is so powerful or this entry criteria is so powerful is because i understand that overall prices are going higher and higher and higher and they're bullish right and if there's any sort of supply that had to enter that price at a given moment of time it's most likely going to get destroyed or it's most likely it's it's going to get overpowered by the demand that's already taking prices higher or the supply that came into these areas are getting destroyed by demand because the demand is so strong that it, prices are not returning to areas where they once were prices are not going lower they're not going lower at all they're going higher so if there had to be a bit of supply and the demand overpowers it that is a sign to show you that the money that is taking prices higher is still there that's a footprint it's like when you go to the kruger national park and you get out the car and you see a footprint of you know lion paws or cheetah paws you know that there are lions or cheetahs in that area so that is a signal to me to show that there is demand or there is some sort of smart money there's some sort of buying interest that is in this market at that given moment in time so that's why i would look for market conditions where if it is bullish and it's proven to be bullish where it's going it's going it's going it's accumulating and then there's a breakdown right prices would consolidate and then it decides to go long again i would enter in the anticipation in the anticipation of catching that expansion or that second leg of that Im of that impulse that's actually the whole psychology behind the entry criteria it's just understanding that supply came in and that supply is getting overpowered by that demand because the supply that came in is not enough to take prices lower but the demand is so powerful enough to take prices higher and it's going with that demand and that's why you and that's why i i, I caught trades like this that's why you, you can catch trades that that just go in your direction and they never get they never go into drawdown they never go into losses they just go so you can see over here it absolutely just went you know even though these were the same buy trades that i took there was probably more selling in this price section over here than there is over here because look how prices just moved away from this area but prices took a while to move away from these areas so that's just the understanding of why this entry criteria is the entry criteria i use and that's why the entry criteria is so powerful is because it sets you up in positions where you can find trades like this where if you had to anticipate a long extension of or a long impulse where prices just move away from they move away from an area and they never come back this is powerful because you understand that once supply comes in and if demand overpowers that supply it's most likely going to overpower that supply once or if it's proven over a period of time to go higher if it's proven over a period of time to go higher and supply comes in and demand overpowers that supply it's just going to continue going higher and higher and higher so yeah same thing again i took more trades again it's the same concept all over again and you can see just the final bit over here just ignore mark goldbridge over here i was watching man united and fulham that night um it's it's the same thing guys like look there's a low over here there's a low over here there's a low over there there's a low over there there's a low over there there's lows over here there's there's a low over here and look look at the look at these lows look at how price does not return it never it never in this time period returned and this is exact market where you want to be a trader these are the types of opportunities that are presented to you these are the types of trades where you get the the impulse 
and a bit of a correction and then you get an impulse and you take the trade you take a loss or you take a break even or it goes in your, in your direction like some of the most perfect impulse correction trades you could take you know yeah it impulsed and it was correcting for a while until it started to expand out of the area again you probably would have been taking a trade over here and it moved away from that area it comes back and it goes even higher so hopefully you guys can see what this is all about it's it's literally just that and on friday it was showing the same thing where it actually increased now so it wasn't 62 percent like it was on the monday it was 66 percent where people were going short and it still remained bullish as you can see here it still remained very bullish so and the cloud of liquidity that i drew on the monday this was what it was on the friday so they all got liquidated you can see the price on monday was here and then the price at the end of the trading week was there so they all got liquidated all these people that were selling they all got destroyed again and i spoke about this in february i spoke about this in july and i'm speaking about it again and it happened again so yeah anyway hopefully you guys understand hopefully you guys see what i did this week and yeah let's just hope that we'll have another great trading week again i'll see you guys on the next one cheers